Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life with New York Times bestselling author Joyce Meyer. On today's program, Joyce will be teaching from her series entitled The Value of Spending Time with God. There are a lot of things around you today that desire your attention, like family, work, and technology, just to name a few. All these things want to be first in your life, but where is God in all that? God desires your time immensely. He wants to spend that time with you to talk and listen to you and to encourage you. All those other things that want your time can be frustrating and stressful. But if you learn to spend time with God first, He will give you the strength to face anything that may come your way. In today's teaching, Joyce will show you the importance of time with God and the impact it can have on your life. Now, here's Joyce with today's teaching, The Value of Spending Time with God. I'm excited about sharing the word this morning, and I've got more message than I've got time, but I'm trusting God to get out the very best part for you. For those of you who haven't been here, I've been doing a series that we've just been calling Making Good Habits and Breaking Bad Habits, trying to get the point across that a lot of the times that we think are just problems that are way over our head and just deep bondage and things that we need some kind of a supernatural act of God to get free from. I think a lot of them maybe are just bad habits, things that we've done repetitively over and over and over and over again until they're so ingrained in us that they feel to us like bondage. But the truth of the matter is, with God's help, and only with God's help, you can break up with any bad habit, and you can form a new habit to replace that. If you believe that you are helpless, and we are helpless in that we can't do anything apart from God. And that type of helplessness really is a place of power. But we're not helpless in that. Christ lives in us. We have a wonderful partner, the Holy Spirit, who is the power of God in our lives. And He enables us to do whatever we need to do. I think we need to understand more about the power that is in us. If that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. I love this part. Run and not be weary. Walk and they shall not faint. So there's a lot that is available to us and we need to believe that and understand it. Now we've been talking a lot this weekend in a lot of different ways about the value of putting God first in our life, forming a habit of putting God first in everything, always giving Him that place that He not only deserves but demands. Exodus 20, verse 3, the very first of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, I don't think that's just talking about other so-called spiritual entities that might be worshiped by people. I think anything can become a God to us. Anything that we worship, anything that we put an excessive amount of time into, especially if it's something that takes us away from the run, one true God, becomes a false God that we worship and bow down to. I even think that people can let their feelings become a God. You say, what do you mean to that? Well, are you bowing to the Word of God or to your feelings? Are your feelings controlling you and giving you direction all the time? Or are you able to say, I don't care how I feel, this is what I bow to. I don't bow to anything else. Let's remember for a moment that in Luke 4, when Jesus was in the wilderness and he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and during that time he was being tempted by the devil. We will be tempted. Temptation must come. There's no one here that can avoid temptation. You will never get so spiritual that you will not have temptation. But the enemy said to Jesus, if you will bow down to me just this once, you have to understand that the enemy is always trying to get us to bow to his will, to his ways. And I really believe that in the world that we live in today, there are so many distractions. And actually, we have a huge problem with concentration. And it's been designed by the enemy. For many people, it is very difficult and almost frustrating to try to pray because they cannot keep their mind on what they're doing for more than maybe 30 seconds. And I have to admit that quite often I fight that battle myself, and it's one of my prayers that God would give me a greater ability to concentrate. I could go into a dissertation on why this is becoming so prevalent, but it has a lot to do with all the images being flashed at us. 
And even the fact that people don't have to think today and exercise their mind like they used to. Even Monopoly is now computerized, I've heard. <laughs> we wouldn't want to have to count up that money and try to add. I recently heard from my daughter and some other mothers that in many of the public schools now, they don't even put an emphasis on spelling right because we all have a spell check on our computer. Let me tell you something. We have to continue to think. If we ever stop thinking, then we're going to be open, pray for the enemy to do our thinking for us. He wants us to be passive and not exercise the abilities that God has given us. So no doubt when I say to you, keep God first in your life, there are many other things that are going to be clamoring for your attention. We are probably the busiest people on the face of the earth. I don't know what it is we think we're doing, but we're busy about it. <laughs> most of you at the end of most days couldn't even say what you've accomplished, but you know that you're very frustrated because you were busy all day and it seems that you got nothing done. The Bible says, looking away from all that will distract unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So I think it is very right and very timely and appropriate for me to take some time, not only for you here, but for all the people that watch around the world saying, you have to form a habit of keeping God first in everything, first in your thoughts, your conversation, your time, your finances. You can be as close to God as you want to be. It just depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. Do not look at someone else who has a great, close, intimate relationship with God that hears from God and knows the Word of God and say, well, I wish I had that kind of relationship with God. They did not get it wishing. I don't even know how to tell you how thankful I am for what I know, but it's taken 32 years of diligently studying the Word to know what I know. You can know it too. You think, 32 years. What else do you have to do? I mean, really, what else do you have to do that's going to produce this kind of result in your life? So once again this morning, I'm going to hammer the value of spending time with God. James 4, 4 and 5. Father, we thank you as we approach the majesty of your word today. We so appreciate what you're teaching us. And I pray that this today would not be information but revelation. Let us once and for all understand that you will not take second place to anything. In Jesus' name, amen. James 4, 4, you are like unfaithful wives, having illicit love affairs with the world. Wow. <laughs> Let's don't read it so fast we miss it. And breaking your marriage vow to God. Now, I would hope if I was having an affair with someone else, my husband would be jealous. But God is your true spiritual husband. He's my spiritual husband, and he does not appreciate it when we spend more time with other things than we do with him. Amen? You're like unfaithful wives, having illicit love affairs with the world and breaking your marriage vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world takes his stand as an enemy of God. You can't live with one foot in the world and one in the kingdom and hope it's going to work. That's called lukewarm Christianity. And Revelation says, I would rather you be hot or cold, for if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. And I think we all know there's way too much compromise today, way too much watered down Christianity and commitment to God. And I believe if we are going to serve God, then we need to do it with our whole heart and we need to do it zealously and passionately and fervently. Amen? Or do you suppose that the Scripture is speaking to no purpose that says, this is James 4, 5. Do you suppose that the Scripture is speaking to no purpose that says, the Spirit whom He has caused to dwell in us yearns over us, and He yearns for the Spirit to be welcome with a jealous love. <laughs> God is actually... Jealous, not in the way that we think of jealousy, not in a wrong kind of jealousy, but 
He very much wants your attention. <laughs> he wants you to care more about him than anybody. He wants you to talk to him more than anybody. He wants you to lean on him, trust in him more than you do anything else. Now, the next verse of Scripture that I'm going to read you was one of those defining verses of Scripture in my life. I was thinking this morning, probably I should do a series sometime on maybe like the 10 Scriptures that have been the most life-changing for me. We love all of the Word, but you know that we have those ones that just are like wow, wow, double, triple wow to us. That is just like, man. And I must tell you that when I came to understanding this next verse I'm going to read you, I was the most frustrated Christian that any Christian could have ever been. Not only did I know that I needed to spend more time with God, I struggled trying to do it, and somehow or another, I couldn't seem to give Him the place that He needed. I just was not happy. I was under condemnation a lot. I mean, I was already teaching the Word, and I, I knew things that I was still having a difficult time getting them to work in my life, and I tried so hard. I mean, my goodness, I tried and tried. I tried till I almost died. Sincere Christians do that. They try and they try and they try and they get more and more confused because they don't understand why it is that the harder they try, the more ridiculous they behave. <laughs> Amen? You know how we are. We lay in bed and have our plan for holiness for the day. <laughs> and it lasts until we put our feet on the floor. Amen? Now, remember, he's saying, okay, you're like unfaithful wives, have an illicit love affair with the world. You're putting all this stuff ahead of me. I don't like it. Now, here comes the answer. But I love the buts of God in the Bible. You know, it's like the Bible says that Joseph's brothers hated him, but God gave him favor. But he gives us more and more grace. Now, I had heard a lot about grace through my years as a Christian. I heard about grace when I was even in the denominational church that I was part of for a long time, I got a great foundation about the grace of God. We need to know what the grace of God is. I'd heard a definition that it was God's undeserved favor, which it is. But the Amplified Bible, I thank God for the Amplified Bible because I would never be a Greek student nor a Hebrew student. I am just like, I got to keep it simple. I'm still working on reading English. I don't have time to get into. <laughs> so I need a little help. How many of you need a little help sometimes, okay? I admire these people that have got a string of letters behind their name that mean they're really smart, you know? But even if you don't have those, you do have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Come on. I said you've got the Holy Spirit. I'm reading a book right now by Hannah Whitehall Smith called The Secrets of a Happy Christian. And I've read it, parts of it before, but I really feel led to read it again right now. And it's been in print 125 years. And I love the way the book started. Thanks for listening. Allow God to speak into your life as you spend more time with Him in His Word with today's offer, The Everyday Life Bible. And understand better in studying the Bible with the How to Study the Bible DVD. This hardcover Bible and DVD is available now for a donation of $35 or more in U.S. funds, and we do accept all major credit cards. You can order today's offer from our website at JoyceMeyer.org, or you can call us toll-free at 1-800-789-0089. Again, the number is 1-800-789-0089. Being thankful for what God has done is one of the most important attitudes that we can have. It really helps us when we think on the things that we do have instead of the things that we don't have. You know, I believe that gratitude is powerful. I think it puts a smile on God's face and it does nothing but good for you and everyone around you. Good things are in store when you understand the power of being thankful. Experience the power of being thankful. A new devotional by Joyce Meyer. Thanks again for listening today. And to order today's offer, just head to our website or call. Until next time, remember, glorify God and enjoy Him forever. This is the key to enjoying everyday life.